Picture a summer stolen whole from some coming-of-age film set in small-town 1950s. This is none of Ireland's subtle seasons mixed for a connoisseur's palette, watercolor nuances with a pinch-sized range of cloud and soft rain. This is summer full-throated and extravagant in a hot pure silk screen blue. This summer explodes on your tongue, tasting of chewed plates of long grass, your own clean sweat, Marie biscuits with butter squirting through the holes, and shaken bottles of red lemonade picnicked in tree houses. It tingles on your skin with BMX wind in your face, ladybug feet up your arm. It packs every breath full of mown grass and billowing wash lines. It shines and fountains with bird calls, bees, leaves, and football bounces and skipping chants. One, two, three. This summer will never end. It starts every day with a shower of Mr. Whippy notes and your best friends knock at the door. Finishes it with long, slow twilight and mother silhouetted in doorways, calling you to come in through the bats shrilling among the black lace trees. This is every summer decked in all its best glory. Hello friends, my name is Elizabeth and today we are talking about creating atmosphere in your writing. That section you just heard was from the prologue of Tana French's novel In the Woods. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing her name incorrectly, but Miss French is known for writing rich, immersive, atmospheric thrillers. The paragraph that I just read creates immediate atmosphere in the reader's mind by literally telling them what to picture. That's a unique approach that you don't have to do. But the main thing that description does so well is its use of sensory details. And that is my first and best tip for creating atmosphere in your writing. Notice how this description is not just sight, but also taste, touch, and sound. This summer explodes on your tongue, tasting of chewed blades of long grass, your own clean sweat, Marie biscuits with butter squirting through the holes, and shaken bottles of red lemonade picnicked in tree houses. It's beautiful. This is by far the best way to create any sense of atmosphere in your writing. Focus on all five senses. Lushness. You want to think up creative, unique details to highlight each of the senses in your scene and really drip that across your reader's mind and make them feel like they are actually present in the scene. Five senses is how you do that. Tip number two. Utilize character perspective. Now, this is a common tip for enhancing all types of descriptive writing, but I'm including it on this list because not only is it a good tip for writing just general description, but it's also a great way to create that immersive reading experience. So let's take a look at an example from The Night Counter by Alina Yunus. Again, I'm very sorry about the pronunciation of these names. On her hundredth night in Los Angeles, she had asked her grandson, Amir, in whose arms she planned to die, why everyone on the bus ended everything he or she said to her with a questioning C. She took pride in how she could make her frailties, including her sight, come and go as needed, with the help of two different eyeglass prescriptions, a cane and a hearing aid. C is yes in Spanish, Amir had explained. And then a little further down that page, Fatima waved goodbye to the bus driver and walked home down Santa Monica Boulevard. West Hollywood, according to Amir, was a fashionable neighborhood, but Fatima mostly saw the homeless men and women with their shopping carts, piled with plastic bags and bottles. Some days they waved, but mostly they ignored her, and so she didn't have a chance to ask why they didn't go back to their families. She especially wanted to ask the homeless young man with the dimple on his chin, just like the dimple her son in Las Vegas had. Instead, she glared at him the hardest, and sometimes he smiled back, just like her son. Both of these moments in the scene are from Fatima's point of view and therefore coat the entire landscape of the language used in the scene with her preoccupation with death. There isn't a single description that isn't filtered through that lens. Even if we're not technically in her point of view, the narration is still so colored by her point of view that it touches every word of the scene. Character viewpoint and perspective can really add that lush, immersive reading experience that readers crave. Also, I really love this book. If you haven't read it yet, you really should. It's beautiful. Tip number three, emotionally consistent word choice. That sounds a little weird when I phrase it like that, but what I mean is that when you're writing a thriller and you're having a character walk somewhere, in order to create an atmospheric type of vibe in your story, you would probably lean towards words like skitter and creep instead of lighter words like amble or flounce. And in either case, you'd be choosing more unique verbs than the just simple walk. Unique word choice is pretty much necessary for most types of memorable writing because it really helps establish your voice as a writer in the reader's mind. The words you choose and the way you string them together brings you, as a writer, alive for your reader. So then you can settle into their mind as one of their favorite writers. Their favorite stringer together of words. People. Rather than someone who just spouts out the simplest, most generic words that don't bring anything interesting to the page. But in order to create atmosphere, you need to go one step further than unique word choice and focus on unique 
emotionally consistent word choice. I'm going to show you an example from a children's book for this because A, it is an extremely fun book, and B, children's author children's authors often make the absolute best emotionally consistent word choices since they are limited by both the length of the book and the knowledge level of their reader. They know they want to write a clever immersive story that children can really latch onto and lose themselves in, and so their word choice is really just top-notch. Whenever you want an example of emotionally consistent word choice, just pick up any of your old favorite books from childhood, like a chapter book middle grade level, and you will find them. You will find that emotionally consistent word choice. So this example is from The Door to Time by Ulysses Moore. He slid down against the white rocks of the cliff. It felt like someone was rubbing a cheese grater against his chest. His hands pawed against a rock and managed to cling to a crevice. In this example, the main character, or one of the main characters, Jason, has slipped on some rocks. And in this tiny little paragraph, we get the words slid, pawed, and cling as well as the descriptive simile of it feeling like rubbing a cheese grater against his chest. Emotionally consistent word choices. You had like, I don't know, 30 words in that entire sentence and like every single one of them had the same emotionally consistent tone. That evocative tone that you're going for with your unique word choices. Tip number four. Use conflicting moods in order to highlight one particular mood. This will make more sense in a minute. But basically, you can use the emotional state of different characters to play against the overall tone of your story. And by doing that, it will highlight the overall tone of the story through that discrepancy. So for example, if you're writing a thriller, you can use an oblivious, unworried character to highlight the otherwise spine-chilling plot point of the story in that moment. I believe this is called traumatic irony, when the audience knows something that the character doesn't. Don't quote me on that, I don't remember all my literary terms from school. So, in the example I'm going to show you, the author is utilizing a calm, clinical character to highlight the otherwise spine-chilling plot point of the story. This is an example from the book The Silent Patient by Alex Michelides. As she stared at me, I became aware of what had been troubling me the whole session. It's hard to put into words, but a psychotherapist quickly becomes attuned to recognizing mental distress. From physical behavior and speech and a glint in the eyes. Something haunted, afraid, mad. And that's what bothered me. Despite the years of medication, despite everything she had done and endured, Alicia's blue eyes remained as clear and cloudless as a summer's day. She wasn't mad, so what was she? What was the expression in her eyes? What was the right word? It was... Before I could finish the thought, Alicia leaped from the chair. She threw herself towards me, hands outstretched like claws. I had no time to move or get out of the way. She landed on top of me, knocking me off balance. We fell to the floor. The back of my head hit the wall with a thud. She bashed my head against the wall again and again and started scratching, slapping, clawing. It took all of my strength to throw her off. The way this is written, the reader is almost like lured into a false sense of security because even though the author is using, you know, somewhat emotionally evocative words, the calm clinical outlook of the narrator kind of puts like a protective sheen over those words. So we don't really expect the sudden violence at the end of the paragraph to happen. And because we don't expect it, it becomes more memorable and lends to creating that lush, immersive experience for your reader. Tip number five, utilize location. Because location is important for pretty much all aspects of your novel, it's important to think about how the location will contribute to the atmosphere that you're trying to create before you decide to set your story. I, I know that can go against like a, a pantser's writing style, but um, you know, the setting of your story really impacts the atmosphere that is allowed there. So for example, in this example that I'm going to read from you, read to you, from The Secret History by Donna Tartt, we get a description of the cold. The protagonist is living in an unheated building in winter in Vermont, and it's just the perfect setting. And no spoilers, but thematically, the inclusion of this prolonged descriptive battle against the cold is just so perfect. For creating atmosphere in this particular novel. The setting and the story are just... <laughs> you know, it's a cult classic for a reason, but that happens only because the story is set in winter in Vermont, you know? We wouldn't get any of this important thematic building blocks to be happening in the story if it was set, you know, in Florida or something. We need that cold setting. The location is so important for creating atmosphere in your story. So here we go. The cold in the warehouse was like nothing I've known before or since. I suppose if I'd had any sense, I'd have gone out and bought an electric heater, but only four months before I had come from one of the warmest climates in America, 
and I had only the dimmest awareness that such appliances existed. It never occurred to me that half the population of Vermont wasn't experiencing pretty much what I put myself through every night. Bone cracking cold that made my joints ache. Cold so relentless I felt it in my dreams. Ice flows, lost expeditions, the lights of search planes swinging over white caps as I floundered alone in black arctic seas. In the morning when I woke, I was as stiff and sore as if I'd been beaten. I thought it was because I was sleeping on the floor. Only later did I realize that the true cause of this malady was hard, merciless shivering, my muscles contracting as mechanically as if by electric impulse, all night long, every night. It's gorgeous and sickening, and when I read that, I, like, felt cold. <laughs> it's just, it's just very atmospheric. The entire novel is very atmospheric, but the setting very much contributes not only to the atmosphere, but also the thematic building blocks of the story. It's delicious. Now, I am realizing that pretty much all of the examples that I used in this video are of, like, dark atmospheres, but all of these points still work if you're aiming for, like, a light, fun atmosphere. And you still want to create that lush, immersive reading experience, but just on the lighter side. Like if you're writing a romance. All of these tips still work. You would just focus on words and locations associated with whatever tone you are going for. Like, it's for walk, instead of saying, you know, scuttle or creep, you might say swagger or strut. You might use words like exalt, enchant, flaunt, rejoice. <laughs> and you might locate your story in a warm beach community, or a calm, cozy cottage, or a luxurious high-rise. You know, a happy atmosphere. Hello, friends! My name is Elizabeth, and today we are talking about... Today we are talking... Please like and subscribe.